Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. I have some exciting news to kick things off. Cinti celebrating their 10th anniversary with an incredible sale. You can get their amazing products at up to 70% off. Be sure to use my affiliate link in the description below to support the channel and grab these fantastic deals. Also, if you want to support the channel, also if you want to support the channel further and receive special perks, consider joining my Patreon. The link's in the description below and don't forget to join our active community of Unreal Engine game developers in our Discord. In this video, we're diving into creating a compass in Unreal Engine 5. And for this video, I'll be using the Cinti Sci-Fi HUD pack brought to you by Cinti. So let's get started. All right, so if you're following along the tutorial and you're using the Cinti Sci-Fi HUD, just like I am, the first thing I did was grab this SPR HUD Sci-Fi bar cluster underlay and drop this into Photoshop to basically just create this compass looking thing. And I'm using the font Orbitron I'll link that in the description below because that's what Cinti uses in their interface pack. And that's by Google Font. That's by Google Font, so you can use it commercially as well. And after you export that, um, I'm just going to drag this in to my content browser. And I'm just going to right click and create a material. And I'll call this M underscore compass and double click to open this up. And now the first thing I'm going to do is you're already going to see our texture sample connected to the base color. I'm just going to highlight over this M underscore compass output and change material domain to user interface because we're going to convert this or use this as a UI in a widget blueprint. And then I'm going to change the blend mode from opaque to translucent. And I'll connect the RGB to final color and the alpha to opacity. And the reason why we set it to translucent is to get that opacity from our alpha so that we only see these letters. And it's gonna look pretty janky in here, but we're gonna customize that in the widget blueprint. So what I need to do is just hold the U key and left click to get text cord, or you can just um, look for the text co texture coordinate by right clicking and searching for it. And with this, I'm just gonna add. And what we need to do is actually add a sort of offset, which will turn our compass from left to right. So from the B key, I'm actually just gonna I'm actually going to hold one and left click to create a constant, or you can right click and create a constant like this. And we do need to, so I'm going to keep both of these. And for the top one, I'm going to right click it, convert this to a parameter and call this something like offset. And now I'm going to add these two together and then combine, or I'm, I'm going to append these two together and combine it into this B node. So just look for an append node. So I'll do append vector and I'll connect this bottom constant as zero to the B node and connect this to this B. So you'll see that when I change the values to something like 0.5 and I'll hit control save and make sure you connect this to the UV. And you'll see that whenever you connect, whenever you change the values of these. So example, if I put this as 0.5, this will actually um, just move everything halfway through. So now you'll see the S here for South instead of North. And I'll just leave this at zero and we're converting this to a parameter so that we can edit this in our widget blueprint. So go back to third person map, right click, and we're going to create a user interface widget blueprint, create a user widget. And I'm going to call it something like WBP compass. Now double click to open that up. And in my compass, I'm just going to go ahead and add an overlay, which I need to turn into a variable. So just left click this, make sure is variable is checked. And I'm going to call this something like overlay panel. And then I'm going to add an image. So look for an image, add this into the overlay. And I'll left click this, make sure is variable is checked and call this compass image. And for the image under the brush, we're going to set it to that material we created called M underscore compass. And now you'll see it's not um, looking so great. So what we're going to want to do is you'll see an image size under the brush while you're on your image under details or under your hierarchy. And we're just going to set it to the X and Y. So if you don't know how to get that, when you go into Photoshop and let's say I wanted to export so let's say I want to export this image, right? This one right here. When I right click this, I can do export as, and it's going to give me my 906 by 58 image size right here. So I'm just going to copy these variables over right here. So 906 by 58 to get that perfect size to make it look a lot cleaner. And now on the top right, I'm just going to replace fill screen to desired, just so we only have this and hit compile and save. And now we need to go into our graph. So click graph. And the first thing we're going to do is actually look. So we need an event pre construct. So I'm going to look for that event pre construct over here. And I'm going to drag this out and create a dynamic material instance. And this will allow us to basically just call our material that we created. And we're going to set it to a value. So for the parent, look for m underscore compass. So go ahead and right click this return value and promote this to a variable. And I'll call this something like compass material. 
and you'll see that it's automatically set to material instance dynamic over here. And I'm just going to highlight over everything and click Q on my keyboard to straighten these lines up. And now I'm going to drag this out and look for, I'm actually going to bring out my image called compass image and get a get compass image and then drag this out and do a set brush from material. And now what we're going to do is just assign our dynamic material instance to the material node over here and then continue this execution pin from setting compass material over to set brush from material. And then I'm going to set a timer by event. And basically what we're going to do is not an event tick, but something a little more optimized. So let me drag this out and I'm going to look for a custom event and I'll call this something like compass optimize tick. Cause it's still going to be ticking just a bit better. So I'm going to make sure looping is checked. Max once per frame is checked and the time I'm going to set it to something like 0.02. So with our compass optimized tick, we're just going to drag out our compass material that we created here, do a get, and then we're going to drag this out to a set scalar parameter value. And the parameter that we're using is the same one in our material compass. So we call this offset over here. So I'm just going to type this in exactly how it's spelled and named over there or right here. So I'm just going to type an offset in this parameter name. And now for the value, we basically just want to get the control rotation of our character and divide it by 360 because the, the compass will work in a 360, kind of like a full circle. So I'm going to get player character. And for the return value, I'm going to look for a get control rotation. And now I'll right click this return value and split the struct because we only need the Z axis or the yaw of this. And I'm basically just going to type a slash to get that divide node. And I'm going to divide it by 360 to, because it's going to be a full circle. Just so that when we turn around our character, it's going to be turning around that whole compass material as well. And I'm going to plug this into the value. Hit compile and save. And now the last thing we need to do is actually just open up our third person character. We need to open up our third person character and make another widget to, um, to put our compass in a UI and make it look cleaner. So I'm going to go to my third person map, select my default pawn class. If you don't have world settings open, head over to window and make sure world settings is checked and then click on this magnifying glass to find your character, double click to open it up. And at the end, so I'll just scroll to the top where it says event to begin play. And all I'm going to do here is just uh, create widget in the owning player. And for the class, we're going to select um, that HUD that we created. So in this case, I'm just going to select this WVP compass, and then I'm just going to add to viewport. And then make sure the return value is assigned to the target and hit compile and save. And it's not going to look pretty right now because we haven't really changed anything in the HUD, but you'll see on the top left that when I turn around, it doesn't look as smooth. And that's because we're not using event tick or a smaller ratio, but it is still kind of fine for what we need and a lot more optimized. So for me, honestly, this is actually pretty fine. And now in my third person character, I've already set up the widget blueprint stuff and I just want to create a HUD for the looks. So this part is really going to get into uh, making it look like those Cinti assets coming along together. So I'll go back to my third person character and the content, right click user interface and create a widget blueprint. And I'm just going to call this HUD. And on my third person character, I also want to change this to HUD as well. And I'm going to make sure that this HUD class is already selected into the HUD class over here. And I'm just going to open this up. And now this part will get a little tricky because of the amount of UI stuff that goes into it. It's going to kind of get a little cluttered in the hierarchy, but don't worry, we are going to make it look nice. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is add a canvas panel because I want to anchor everything to the middle. So this includes the images, the size boxes, the scale boxes, and so on. And now with the canvas panel, I just want to add so I'm going to add another canvas panel in my canvas panel, and I'll show you why we're going to do that. And in this canvas panel, we're going to add that WBP compass. So I'll drag and drop this into canvas panel and hit compile and save. And now for this canvas panel, the second one selected, we're going to select anchors and select the middle top one and reset the position X to bring this back. And for the alignment on the X, I'm going to do 0.5 to center this. And then I also want to just bring it down a bit. So the position Y I'll do something like, so for the alignment, I'll do negative one to bring it down a bit. And then for the size X, I'm going to do 480. And then for the size Y I'm going to do 58. And when I select the WBP compass, I'm going to click size to content like so. And what I want to do next is just make sure that it's only in this canvas panel, the second one in here. I don't want this overlapping stuff to happen. So I'm just going to get rid of that simply by selecting clipping. So 
click on the canvas panel and let's let's start naming these to organize this. So this is going to be compass canvas panel. And while you're in your compass canvas panel, you're going to scroll down and look for this rendering clipping option and change it to clip to bounce. And basically what this is going to allow you to do is when you move your widget, you'll see everything in here only. And we just want to limit it to this space. So this looks good to me and I'm going to compile and save this. And I'm just going to collapse that canvas panel. And now I'm going to go back to my content browser and I'm going to drag in a few image from that Cinti HUD pack. So in my HUD folder, I'm going to drag, let's see. So I'm going to drag in this glass B or SPR HUD sci-fi box glass B and just drag it into my content browser. And in Photoshop, I separated these brackets. So it's, it comes in a pair like this, but I just separated them alone and just scaled them up a little bit and just call them layer two and layer three. So I'll drag those in as well. So I just call this right bracket and left bracket and I'll drag those in. And in the HUD, I'm also gonna drag in this box glass E right here. And of course you should probably organize this a little better, but for my purpose, I don't really need to. And I think this is all I need for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just play with these. So now back in my HUD, I'm gonna add a bunch of images. So I'll just add one, two, three, four. And I think I only need four for now. And I'm gonna make sure the compass is actually at the very bottom because in user, in these widget blueprints, whatever's at the bottom in your hierarchy is actually showing first. So I'm gonna name this top image glass front and the second one is just going to be called glass and this one will be called left bracket and the next one the, the next image will be called right bracket so now for my glass front i'm just going to select my glass e that i brought in like so set the anchor to the top middle reposition this alignment will be set to 0.5 and for the size X, I'll do something like 516. And for the Y, I'm going to do something like 55. And the position Y will actually be, let's do 57, just to cover this whole thing, maybe 58. And this looks good to me. And for the tint, I'm actually just going to get the color using a color picker off their interface HUD screenshots. So I got this RGB color. Um, 3AA0DB41 for the sRGB and hit OK. And this will pretty much just set the alpha for you as well. So it's pretty see-through. And now for the glass part, I'm just going to set it to that glass B. And then reset the anchor or set the anchor to the top middle. Reset the X. Alignment again will be 0.5. And the size for this one will actually be... I just want to fit it exactly how it is over here. So I can just use my keys to essentially just make sure that it's directly at the top. And you want the white to be exactly on the top and the bottom, just so that it fits this glass perfectly. And it's okay if it overlaps a little bit. Um, so I'll do 57. And it doesn't matter if it overlaps because we're gonna have those brackets to cover it for us. So the brackets will pretty much be our cleanup. And I think this looks good for right now, but we'll have to check with the brackets. So I'll hit compile and save. And now for the left bracket, I'll just assign the image to the left bracket. Reset the anchor again. Alignment point five. Actually, the alignment will not be. Okay. And the position will be negative 250. And the position Y will be 36. And 100 and size Y will also be 100 to extend this. And the image itself will be at yeah, 335, 333. That looks good. And now I just need to duplicate this on the other side. So for the right bracket, I'm just going to go to the image, select right bracket, like so. Reset the anchor to the top middle, alignment again, 0.5. And the same thing, but opposite. So this one was negative 250 on the X. So this one will be 250. And then this one was. 36 on the Y. So this one will also be 36 on the Y. And the size was 100 by 100, just like that. 
And this looks pretty good to me, but I kind of want a bit more of a bluish tint. And I think that's because I forgot to change my glass color. So when you select glass, you'll be able to change your tint over here. And for the tint, I'm going to do that same srbg color we had selected previously so i'll hit okay just like that and this is giving a more neon tone because you can see it looks brighter on the bottom and top so i'll hit compile and save and now when i head over to my third person map and click play we have this nice looking compass very low poly very stylized and we'll definitely do more during our ui tutorial series that we're going over and yeah this actually looks really good to me i'm actually really liking how this turns out all right, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider supporting me on Patreon. You'll get access to special perks and be a part of a fantastic community. The link's in the description below. And don't forget to join our Discord community. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. Hit the bell icon to stay updated. And don't forget that Cinti's having their 10-year birthday sale with products up to 70% off. There's only a few days left on this, and I really recommend everyone to get this. Their packs are really high quality, and they have uh, tons and tons of products all bundled up into one pack, and they do offer a lot of different things like sci-fi space, medieval stuff, fantasy, bosses. They're even doing animations now. And yeah, they've been updating their stuff for Unreal too. So it's a really good time to get in because these sales are better than Black Friday stuff. And yeah, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.